worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord.
Almighty, hallelujah. God Almighty, hallelujah. God Almighty, hallelujah. God Almighty, God Almighty, hallelujah. Full of glory, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You take the glory. You take the praise. You take the honor. We just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son. Hallelujah. Thank you for salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for salvation, oh God. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you and we praise your name. You're full of glory, hallelujah. Majesty and honor, dominion and power. It belongs to God, hallelujah. Power belongs to God, hallelujah. Power belongs to God. You're full of glory and we worship you, Lord God. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. We magnify you, Lord God. There's none like you, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that dwell therein. Hallelujah, creator of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah, the moon and the stars. You created them, oh God. The galaxies, oh God. Hallelujah, you're full of glory and we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. And his truth endures to all generations. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Be with us on tonight, oh God. Be with us and bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless our pastor, oh God. Touch him in the mighty name of Jesus. Crown him with wisdom and glory. Hallelujah. Honor and power. Hallelujah. Knowledge and strength. Give him, hallelujah. Give him knowledge and skill and all wisdom and knowledge. We bless your holy name. Bless his wife, oh God, our first lady. Bless her, oh God. Crown her with wisdom. Hallelujah. Bless her going out and her coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our speaker on tonight. Word is mouth, oh God. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. There's none like you, Lord God. There's none like you, Lord God. There's none like you, Lord God. And we bless your holy name. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, and amen. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands in your own way. Give him glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we give you glory, and we give you glory, and we give you glory, hallelujah. God, you're good, you're great, you're awesome, and you're worthy of all praise. Hallelujah, you may take your seats. Come on, look at somebody and wave at them. It's good to have eyes, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We greet all of you in the name of Jesus. All of you that are here, we God bless uh, the lady of my life, Evangelist Valerie Edwards. God bless you. Amen. And all of you, greet all of the YouTube and Facebook listeners. We thank God for you tuning in. It's time for the word of God. And uh, we're going to be blessed and privileged to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we're going to bless God right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to hear from the elder Tom Hogan. Uh, he's going to come and um, is she singing? Yeah, she's singing. Come on. Uh, his wife is going to do the 
Roots harmonic solo, and then after that, you'll be in the hands of be in the hands of the elder Tom Hogan. Let's say amen. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good all the time. I work for a school district, and one of the things that I've discovered in the school district with all of our departments is that a lot of the departments are working in silos. So this department is doing their thing, and this department is doing their thing, and this department is doing their thing, and we call it a silo, and that's kind of like individual. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And it can be messy. And so um, I'm going to sing this song, and y'all are going to help me. Because um, in Christian Dome, in the kingdom of God, we do not work in silos. We work together. We work together in a unified purpose. And so it's very important for us to know that I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. And once we realize that and we're unified, then we can say, I need the oh. God, you're God all by yourself, Father God. You are the great I am, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There's something about that name. Jesus. That heals. That delivers. That set free, God. I love that name. In the name of Jesus. Our hearts and minds declare, our God, our Father, the Lord, we thank you for the day, Lord. Thank you for your time that you allow us to be in this place, Father God. We ask you to move right now, Lord. Father God, I ask you the Holy Spirit to come, Father God. Rest, rule, and abide over us, Father God. Hands of protection, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Rest to bless everyone here, Father God. Bless those who are listening on Facebook and YouTube, Father God. Touch their mind, touch their heart, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. 
move, Father God, in a mighty way, Father God. Let me know that you're God and you're God by yourself, Father God. And Lord, we ask you for thank you for traveling mercy, Father God. Father God, that you didn't have to, Father God, but Satan, the Lord rebuked you. The blood of Jesus come against you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray, amen, amen, amen. You can have to see it. I was, um, Pastor asked me to um, teach, and um, I was having a hard time with the, what to come up with. You know, it was so many things that running, was running in my mind, you know, that I said, Lord, calm my mind down, you know, you know, then he gave me um, the beauty of unity. And we become together. The Bible says when two or three are gathered in his name, that he is in the mix. And Father God, and I was thinking about this coming together and um, why I go to church and why I love fellowshipping and my family. And um, so he just, he just told me, said um speak about unity speak about harmony and fellowship and i sorry i thank pastor for giving me the time to teach from the god thank you pastor i think those are on in uh, facebook and youtube for turn, turn, turning in and listening i think those my church family for showing up because you didn't have to out of your busy schedule i understand so i thank you for showing up and last, I thank my wife for being my wife, for holding me up for the God who listened to me, Father God, and who understand that I don't want to say my craziness because, because I'm not crazy, but my uniqueness <laughs> in a better way. Thank you, my sister, and my thank you, my sister. You know, you know, I think that she, she, she understand me, you know, and um, so I think of my wife. I love her and I, I tell her everything that I think her and I love her because she love a, a man more than she loved me. I'm trying, I'm talking about Jesus, you know, and I'm not jealous when she spend time with them, you know, and she know that I love a man more than I love my wife. I'm talking about Jesus. I thank God for saving me. I thank God just, just being who he is. Amen. So my title is The Beauty of Unity. In Psalms 133 verses 1, David captured one of the profound truth that we are to live in oneness. Somebody say oneness. As brothers and sisters in Christ. Psalms 133 says, Behold, how good and pleasant is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In other words, behold how good and pleasant is brother to live in harmony. Amen. Amen. David begins with a exhortation. He says, uh, which, which means it's the acting of a strong, encouraging word. And um, I asked the God, just, I asked, asked the Lord, just give me something encouraging. You know, I don't want to uh, talk about the church. I don't want what church is going through. I want to be encouraged. So as you encourage me, I encourage you. You know, and and just pray for me, Amen. and I pray for you. Amen. So David says that be um, David begins with a uh, with an exhortation of a strong, encouraging in word. He he says, "Be whole," and and in, in, in which he says that be whole. It takes a place of a notice of notice so 
do just like when, when someone comes in, you said, behold, behold. Then you notice when he says, be, be, behold, it's an encouraging word. Behold, stop what you're doing. Listen, listen, listen. Then he says that, so David draws our attention to something good and pleasant. Unity among our brothers and sisters. Um, I was with my son a couple of days ago, and he asked me, he said, Dad, what makes you happy? Then I was thinking, what makes me happy? And I couldn't answer him at that time. And I said, well, let me get back to you because I, thinking, I think that you are asking me the wrong question. You know, because I know happiness is temporary. One day you're happy, one day you're sad, you know. So to me, happiness is no. So I said, well, so the next day I saw him and I said, well, I thought about it, Brandon. And I said that I know what makes me sad. You know, and you know I love family, and our family aren't um, are in it. You know, and um, I said, well, what makes me sad is when my children is out the fold. What makes me sad that we don't fellowship in church. Praise God that my daughter is here and my grandbaby. So, so then that makes me thankful when I see my daughter comes in. You know, you know for a word, you know, and to be encouraged. So I saw, so I told Brandon, you know, what, that, was makes, that was makes me sad, you know. You know, when, when our loved ones, God's people, stray away. That makes me sad when, and I want to pray for them. So when you see me in the altar, I'm waiting for God to give me a push. And I don't know when he's giving me a push, but he gives me a push. And when he gives me a push, I always go to the altar. And I pray for myself, but most of all, I pray for Access Church. I pray for the pastor, the first lady, and his children, his family. I pray for the Access um, family, the deacons, the elders, the mothers, you know, the 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 department, you know, you know, bless them for they save them for the God. And I, I I just pray without seizing. I learned how to pray without seizing. Seizing, you know, and we should pray without seizing. I pray for my sisters and brothers, you know. And um and I asked God to say that, well, you know, um I have a stroke. I know I'm really had a stroke, and I said, "Well, Lord, regulate my mind, you know, you know, and bring back my remembrance." Then I'm still talking about the beauty of unity, and I asked asked God, uh, "What can I do?" And I thank Pastor for um, opening church on Thursday morning. Enter extra prayer. See, because prayer helped my mind. It, because God had to em empty out something because I was stiff necked. I had a hard head. I refused to do what God wanted me to do. I've been in accidents, I got shot. And I still wouldn't get close to God where God was planning to take me. So he said, okay. He's a stiff neck, hard head, stubborn, you know, and Pastor talked about sin. That's a sin, you know. So he had to take my mind, if I can say that, if you can relate to that. He had to take my mind. And 
when I spoke the last time, I said, you know, I was depressed. I was depressed because I couldn't remember a scripture, a scripture. So I started going to Thursday prayer. And slowly but surely, I sat there. I sat there. Then the scriptures, by listening by other prayer warriors, then start remembering about the scriptures. Glory to God that the church doors was open. There's the glory to God through a pandemic that the past that God allowed um, God give um, that pastor. Someone, some help me out. Yeah, that that God allows pastor to keep the doors open, to keep the doors open. I thank God for, for, for that because as his church, save me. This, the fact of, of being in the atmosphere of unity among other saints, prayer boys, praising, praising, worshiping him, crying out to God and I, and it, it, it saved me. It saved my mind. I asked God to allow me to have a saved mind. Amen. Amen. So, find a few people and say, God is good. 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 So, he said that it is good because it reflects the heart and purpose of unity among his people. John 17, verses 21, 23. It says that, that they all, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. He establishing oneness that they also may be one in us that we are supposed to be in God we will be in God that that the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them glory to God we walk around like we have no power but the glory of God that God gave us, we need to activate our dominion power that God loved us so much that he gave us what? His only begotten son. And who else said what? So, so have what? Everlasting life. Why are we walking around with our head down? Don't we know our father? <laughs> Hallelujah. In 23 says that I and them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me. That's a beautiful statement. And it's, and it's come back to John 3.16. It said God so, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And who should believe in him shall not perish, but have, have everlasting life. I, I owe those who are said something apology. Now, I, I used to say that I live my life like my last because one day it will. And just think about it. I live, like, I live my life like my last. Because one day it will. So I'm cursing myself. You know, because I'm saying that I'm not going to live again. I'm not trusting in God. So God said, You are cursing yourself. You know, you live your life like you're going to live again. <laughs> yeah. 
we should, we should live our life like we should, like, like we will, and not going to, we will live again. I've been going since so much funerals, and people say, oh, my baby, oh, my mama, my baby, that you know that I will see you again. I love my mama. My, my two brothers are passed away, and my mother, and I'm the only one from my immediate family. Um, but I'm not thinking about my mother or my brothers. I'm thinking about Jesus. I want to see Jesus say one thing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for a life. Thank you for dying on the cross, Father God. We are redeemed by your blood, Father God. You, you did not have to, Father God, but it's a love for you, Father God, for, I mean, for me, Father God. Now, make it personally for me, Father God, that you saw, that, that you saw my faults, Father God. Father God, and Father God, that you didn't, that you was constant, Father God. You were committed. You was faithful, Father God. I'm the one who turned my back, Father God, on you and walked away, Father God. But, but after all, that you still love me. Hallelujah, Father God. Yes. This is someone that he is, he is married to the what? Backsliders. So all have sinned and came short. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm just here to just encourage, encourage you, you know, encourage you. Um, is, it is pleasant because it makes life together as God's people so much enjoyable. When the saints come, we went to the DR you know, and I ain't tell no one that I have, I'm a stroke survivor. I have five strokes, and I was asking God, I was, matter of fact, I was fasting every Wednesday for five months for, for, for me to be able to, to, to go. And I ain't tell no one that, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I had strokes. Then when I got there, one of the elders says that when you, when you go on a mission trip, whatever is, is in you, God's going to press out. And he said, Tom, it's your first mission trip. You'll see, whatever is it in you, he's going to press out. And one of the brothers says that, that she dies daily for God to get the glory. So all that make it, made a connection. You have to die daily for God to get, get, to, to get his glory. And wherever it's in you, he's going to press out. If you are a servant or if you are a helper or you are a lover for people, and, and you know, God would press that out out you know and I love what I've seen because there was so much so many distractions you know the same distractions that is here also there the same distractions that is there is also there so I came to realize that there was distractions everywhere but people get comfortable for the uh, from the distractions oh my car broke down. Oh, I ain't got no money. Oh, my children. Oh, that and that. Oh, my job, you know, and they, they are used to, used to hearing bad news or are used to being in a distractive state of mind. No, but the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, you recognize that Satan, the Lord rebuke you. you came to realize these abstractions that you have. I was talking to um, Pastor Smith, you know, just now, and I said, man, how you doing? You okay? He said, yeah, you know, thank you for praying for me. And um, I said, man, you know, I love you. You know, because Sunday was so high that we was praying for him, and I kind of realized 
and, and I bend down and start praying, start touching his feet. Then he grabbed my hand and for, for his side. He said, pray for my side. He grabbed it and kept on grabbing it, and I was praying for it, praying for it. I said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We speak healing. And, 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 and I just see how God was moving in, moving in his life. Then, then, then he said like this. He was, he said like this. He said like this. You know this. You know. But there was so much healing, <laughs> healing was going on. Then, 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 then on the way home, Mother Brantley was saying that she missed Pastor's plan. After the service, the service was so high that people were praising, people were delivering. There was healing going on. And she said that she missed Pastor's plan. I said, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father God. The service was high. Philippians 2, 12 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, Obey not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Sometimes we got to realize that I'm come to church. I'm going to get my breakthrough. I'm not... Uh, I am not going to be concerned of these distractions. Uh, I'm going to get what I need from God, a word from God. Someone asked me that, why do I go to church? You know, because of the word. You know, that word should convict you. It convicts, it convicts me. When, when pastor preached, I enjoy a word of encouragement. But I need that correction. I need that con conviction. I said, Pastor, Pastor, yeah, Pastor, go ahead. Amen. Because I am agreeing with that. With that. 13 says, for it is God who works in you both the will and the do for his good pleasure. And once again. Intercession prayer, which saved me. I know as you say, oh, is is the church is the building, but the church is just the building. But guess what? I clean the building. I think pastor for for being who he is, you know. He said that he won't have a church with running water with buckets. The bathroom is clean, you know. Um, he's take care of his house. He take care of the church like he take care of his house. You know, I've been to his house. You know, lovely, beautiful house. Lovely, beautiful church. And he loved his people. He loved the church. He loved his wife. Amen. So, I'm ending. See, I was here to encourage, and I pray that you got something from it. Um, pray for me as I pray for you, and watch God change things. Come on and bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody's standing. Amen. Come on, yeah. Everybody we can just find two or three people that you can link up together. Since we're talking on unity. Since we're talking on unity. So just stay in threes. Just stay in threes. Stay in threes or fours. Three or four. Just three or four. And just get get your group. Just get your group and 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 uh, the 
one you're touching, pray for that one. We're talking about unity, so just pray for that one. Just look in your group and just pray for the one you're touching. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Everybody should be praying for someone. If you're in your home, if you have someone that's watching with you, pray for that person. one you're touching is touching Jesus. Hallelujah. And just pray. Pray for that person you're touching. In the name of Jesus. Meet the needs in their life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's bless God in here. Everybody just praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless God in here. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 We bless him. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You hear the adjectives, good and pleasant. It, it is beautiful, it is peaceful, it is wonderful to be like-minded, to, to love God, to worship together, to to understand one another, to pray for people's faults and not talk about them, to, to encourage and not tear down. Hallelujah. It's, it's good and pleasant. Even if we're different, we can pray for one another. We can, we can encourage one another. You can, you can tell each other, you can make it in the Lord. And, hallelujah. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, to inhabit in unity, to make this a safe place that I can come and give you my testimony and, and give you my thoughts and you're not going to hold it against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that again. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. God bless Elder Tom Hogan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the encouraging word. And we thank God for you. We thank God for all of you here. Thank God for the word. Keep coming. Keep coming and, and keep um, um, getting in that word. And um, I've always had a habit of if sometime the Lord will give me a devotion for the week and if he if he didn't give me a devotion, the, the scripture I heard the night before, then that morning, tomorrow morning, I make that my devotion. Um, so a lot of times, uh, uh, I, can always, I can always say, um, getting up and having some time with God before you start your day is, is very appropriate. The 
before you start your day, just uh, uh, get up. I was told that I heard this from several people that knew Bishop Mason, and they would say, Bishop Mason, uh, he would get up, they said he would, he would bathe, and he would get fully dressed, suit tie, and he would, and they would say, where are you going? He said, I'm going to meet Jesus, and he would, he would get on his knees, fully dressed. Now, that, that wouldn't work for me. I have to, I have to. Because if I get fully dressed, I'm going to get distracted. But that's how he did it. You know, me, I, before I do anything, I'm going to take my time and, and get on my knees or um, you know, take my Bible or sing a song and have some time with God. So it's very important to have that time with the Lord uh, before you uh, start your day. And we thank God for that. And we do have devotions that we publish and edit here so you can always go and grab a devotion on our website but whatever you do spend time with God and whatever you do love one another love one another God bless you uh, remember next Tuesday is October 31st and I will be teaching uh, teaching on the, the, the back story of Halloween I will give you some some historical, um, um, historical data on how Halloween came to be. It ain't so innocent as you suppose. Um, and if you know anything about the devil, he is a deceiver. So a lot of the world, a lot of people say, I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't see nothing wrong because the, the enemy, he, he cannot come to you and just say, I'm evil, and I'm going to curse you, and I'm going to possess you. He has to, he has to present it in a package that is acceptable. And uh, I want to give you the backstory of Halloween, and give you some things to think about. And and um, and then, um, so I'll be back, back on my assignment next Tuesday. Uh, we thank God for all the ministers, Elder Hogan. We thank all the ministers. That, that came forth. Thank you. I have uh, got my notes and um, thank God for uh, all of them. I'm going to take that and use that. He said, he said don't say I'm going to live my life like it's the end because it might be. He said, no, I'm going to live my life like I'm going to live again. Now, you're going to hear that again. I like that. Uh, but um, uh, try to pull from from every boy I can, and that's how you enhance yourself by pulling from. Thank you for that. But well, I'll be back next Tuesday uh, speaking. Um, this Sunday coming up, uh, we're going to be hearing from Elder Carl Graham, and we're going to be hearing a word from him and looking forward to worshiping. Uh, the presence of God was so thick in the building last Sunday, and uh, we, we anticipate anticipate uh, a move of God always so keep that in mind and then uh, starting in the month of November um, uh, we'll be in the book of Genesis and I'm getting excited to be uh, getting to the to the to the, the five books of the law so after Genesis we'll go to Genesis Exodus numbers Deuteronomy uh, the five books of uh, Leviticus, uh, the five books of law. We're going to start in Genesis. There's a lot of stories in Genesis, a whole lot of stories, and we want to look at all of them. So we're going to get in the book of uh, Genesis, and we're going to uh, let the word be a blessing to us. Um, God bless you. Of course, uh, uh, you can always dial in tomorrow for our conference call prayer 6 30 a.m live live you can call in um, and then of course uh, on thursday you can come here at nine o'clock if you're not working and have prayer in person um, well, yeah this friday this friday in lieu of halloween uh, bring all bring your children we'll be here in the lower level um, uh, 
games and candy and treats and, and um, uh, mini Bible lessons. So come out. Um, they're going to do um, Hallelujah Night, Friday night. So bring your, bring your little one. I'm going to bring my granddaughter here, and we're going to have some fun. That's under um, uh, the supervision of Missionary Jenny Singleton's to Carmen Lynham. So come 6.30 a.m. Friday, Hallelujah Night. And then on Saturday, uh, the jurisdiction uh, will be here, the Jurisdictional Sunshine Band Day will be here. Um, it will be uh, with our children, um, the Sunshine Band, the Jurisdiction, and there'll be uh, also blessing uh, Janice, uh, missionary Janice Singleton, but come out. She has planned a, a good time for our children. Um, children, it's a Sunshine Band Day and a conference. Uh, the theme is Hold Up the Light. So come, that's this Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. Uh, so Friday will be Hallelujah Night, and then Saturday at 12 noon, uh, the jurisdiction will be in here with our children. And um, I think that's everything. And that's everything. Everybody's standing. If you need to give an offering, um, you need to give an offering. Uh, you can see um, um, Elder Chuni need to give an offering. If you want to give online, you have that privilege. Thank God for you. Thank God for all of you being here. God bless you, Pastor Smith. And uh, again, Elder Hogan, job well done. We appreciate you. Hello, Sister Skyler. Y'all told me her name and I kept forgetting. Kinsley. Hi, Kinsley. How are you? Oh, she's looking at me. All right. Yeah, Grandpa uh, preached tonight. Yeah. God bless you. Bow that head. Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for your word. We love your word and we thank you that uh, we were able to hear an encouraging word on unity. And Father, keep us in love. Keep us in unity. Uh, bless this church. Make this church a church of love and unity. And Father, as we leave this place, take us to our destination safely. Keep us in the center of your will. Don't let any hurt, harm uh, befall us. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus that you will just take everyone home safely and bring us back at the appointed time. We are praying um, for our upcoming services. We're asking for protection uh, on Friday night of our children as we come to give them an alternative to Halloween. We pray your protection on this building. We pray on Saturday uh, for the jurisdiction coming in. We pray Sunday that your presence will be in the room and I pray for the anointed man of God that he will bring a word uh, most relevant for your people. And Father, just keep us safe and bring us back at the appointed time. And you will get all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. We love you.